Hey guys, Eric with Ready Motorsports here, uh, here to show you a new product that we've come out with. Uh, the idea is not new, but the execution of the delivery of it is what we think we've really dialed in. Uh, mostly going to pertain to the VW bus crowd, but it could also apply to the hot street VW guys, especially if you're running comp eliminator heads or street eliminators with six cooling pins on your head versus eight. How do you keep these things cool in the more extreme conditions? Something like this, a bone stock 1600. This isn't going to run hot. Uh, throw this in a 74 bug that it's going to go into, and this will run for years and years. It's never going to have an issue. But say you build a bigger engine for your bus. You put a big 2-liter in it, uh, you know, 2200cc Type 4, or like in our shop truck, a 2021cc Type 4 that's making double horsepower, double torque of a 1600 dual port. Well, with extra power comes extra waste heat. Or in the hot street VW guy world, more compression is going to give you more heat or you've got the cylinder heads with less fins that kind of thing so how do you combat it uh guys have tried everything you know smaller generator pulleys or bigger crank pulleys to speed up the fan that's never shown to really work to lower head temps oil coolers get added those don't do anything for head temps those are totally independent so you're not helping your head temps with oil coolers um you're cooling your oil which is great but so how do you do it even the porsche 911 shrouds there's really never been any heavy data to show that those actually cool any better. They just look cooler. So what do you do? You do what all the racers have done for decades. Uh, you know, Bonneville, Silver State Classic, uh, Pikes Peak, all these guys are running this stuff. They spray water. They spray water into the fan and that helps quench and take the heat out of the heads. So you want to do it on the street. Well, how do you control it? You need something reliable, consistent, only use when it needs something that doesn't consume a lot of uh, uh, product. So let me take you on the back side of this car. I'm going to show you what we've got. We've got one for a type one engine and we've got it for the type four. So we've got the bus crowd handled, uh, type threes. We're working on it. It's a little more complicated. And if you're familiar with the type threes, how their cooling system is not open on the top of the engine bay like this, or like a type four, you'll, you'll understand why, but we've got some ideas and now we've just got to implement them and test them and make sure that that's going to work. But for these two systems, we've got it dialed in. And so I'm going to show you what it is give you a little bit more detail and then I'm going to show you the controls and that's really the heart of the system is the ease of installation that we've done and the controls of how good those work. So come on back here to the other side of this engine and I'm going to show you both systems and uh, I think you're just going to love it. Okay right here is the heart of the system. We've got this is what we call the spray bar system. Uh, it's just made a bar. So what we've got is stainless steel rod that we've built into a framework that attaches with one bolt on the side of the shroud. You attach a, a misting nozzle, it's a patio mister, and that's gonna spray dead center into the fan. And we've made this so that while the engine's in the car, you go to install it, one bolt right there, you just locate it into the case. You can install this without really actually seeing what you're doing because we've made it fit and go exactly where it needs to go. So installation's easy, it's stainless steel, it's not gonna go rusty crusty, because uh, we are introducing water to a system. So you, you know, long term, you want things to last, you want it to work. So easy to do. It sets a little down on the uh, little kickstand there and it works. Let me show you the type four system now. Here's the type four system we've developed, uh, even simpler than the bug one. It attaches to your cast fan shroud at your two locations there and it attaches your misting nozzle. We've positioned it so it will fit with your screen. If you still have it, it puts the nozzle right into it, puts it right into the fan and that's how it's going to quench the system. Easy water line connection, all stainless steel, just like the Volkswagen one, the uh, Type 1. So now you've got a way to spray water in both engines. Okay, and here's the other half of the system right here. Uh, this is the delivery and the control aspect of the kit. So for delivery, we have a 100 PSI pump. This is not just some 40 PSI RV water pump. Uh, this is a, a nice quality, self-regulated 100 PSI pump. So that misting nozzle is going to do a mist of spray. It's going to atomize it really well, not just throw blobs of water on there because we don't want to shock load the cylinder heads. And uh, doing a proper mist like this works so good. We've never had an issue. Um, we've got a one-way check valve here. And the purpose of that is it has a 1 PSI break-off strength. So if you mount your water tank higher than the nozzle it's not going to siphon feed out and empty out your bottle onto the ground so that keeps that from happening uh we keep some vw flare we use a, a lantern filter that we're all familiar with in the vw world 
we use that as our filter for our nozzle. Um, the nozzles do plug up. I, I would say I probably plug one up once or twice a summer. And so in our kit, we'll include three nozzles. Uh, and if you want, we'll we put up a link uh, to Amazon or something and, and show you the nozzles to buy there. You can buy 20 of them for like 10 bucks or just, you know, they're, they're insanely cheap. They're almost worth just replacing rather than cleaning. But we'll give you three nozzles. And then all the waterline tubing is going to be airline DOT rated tubing. It's a lot more expensive than the cheap plastic tubing, but it's extremely durable. It fits better. It seals better. It just works better. And we're trying to provide the best kit we can for you. So we have all that for the water delivery system. And now we've got to control it. For controls, we have our module here. This is, this is all, all us. We've done this all in-house. We've got a, a thermal couple. These are available in... 12 and 14 millimeters so we've got uh you know the type 4 guys and the type 1 guys are all handled there so you install that under the spark plug because you want to read that temperature closest to your valve seats that's your critical temp that's going to be you know what decides if you're going to make it to your destination or not is if you keep those valve seats happy so you run that there under the plug if you've got a head temp gauge already uh, under number three put it on number four that's that simple wiring is easy uh, we provide about four feet of wiring, three wires. You've got red, black, and yellow. Uh, black is ground. Red is key on power. You can run that straight to the ignition coil positive if you want. That's the way I do it in my bus. And then you've got uh, yellow, which is the power to the pump. And the pump draws so little power that it really doesn't need much. It's, it's awesome to run. Works really great. And then we have the box that controls it all. We've installed a momentary switch to bypass the controls in the box. So you can manually run the pump if you want. There's about three different reasons we can think of off, uh, offhand to do that, that you'd want to do that. One is to test the system. You can run that pump and you can hear if it cycles. It's not going to run nonstop. This pump doesn't just run. It has that built-in pressure regulator that kicks the pump on and off on its own at 100 PSI. So you'll hear it tick or just kind of just do a little brrrp, brrrp as it keeps that pressure for the mister. You can do that if you push the button and you don't hear that pump really kick on or you hear it kick on once and that's it. Then you know you got a plug nozzle. So then you can reach back there, unscrew that little uh, brass nozzle, put a new nozzle in, test it again, you're good to go. So that's one thing that that button's good for. Uh, the second one is, say if you refill your bottle and you want to make sure the system's primed again, you can just run that until you hear the pump prime and you're good to go and hit the road that way, right? Good for that. Uh, the other one is, uh, what I would say is for winterization, uh, depending on where you live in the, in, uh, the world. If you've got to get the water out of the system so you don't have a freeze hazard, uh, drain out your reservoir bottle, uh, whatever you're putting water into. Some guys use gas cans even. Uh, some guys use those cheap uh, you know, $10 water bottles from uh, Walmart and stuff like that. You know, whatever you want, whatever fits in your cabinet or in your engine bay opposite the battery, whatever water container you can find that's cheap and easy, throw it in there, right? Uh, but you got to winterize it if you're in that kind of a region. So empty that bottle out, disconnect it from the uh, misting nozzle, and just hold that down for a minute and it's the pump can run dry. It'll pump air through. It'll blow the whole system out. Reconnect your hose back to your misting nozzle and you're ready for spring to come and fill it back up and reprime the system. So we've added manual control to it. But on the inside, let's show you that because no doubt people are going to open that up and take a look at it um, for obvious reasons. So I figure we'll just show you here. There's our circuit board. We've got that mounted down inside the box, nice and secure. You can change your temperatures if you'd like. It does have a display that shows you in Celsius, the temperature probe temperature. Uh, we set them up, before we send them out to you, we set them up to turn on at 375, turn off at 360. If you did want to change that, you can in here. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I think 375 is the upper end of what is safe for long distance, heavy load driving. Uh, and 360 is a good you know, 15 degree swing to turn it on and off. Works out really well. Uh, and then how much water does it use? Not much. Uh, we've timed it with the nozzles we provide. Now there's different size misting nozzles. Uh, don't just throw any misting nozzle in it or you're going to just start making a mess because it doesn't take very much water. The system that we have with this pressure PSI pump and everything, it uses about a gallon every hour and a half at full bore. The thing is, it doesn't run all the time. It just comes on enough to keep the edge off those cylinder heads, help soak some of that heat out of it. So let's say, for example, uh, our trip last October down to Las Vegas, uh, we floored it the whole way there with our bus. Our bus makes, you know, double the horsepower, the torque of a stock 1600 dual port on our dyno. So we're making 
you know, theoretically twice the waste heat. So we've got to handle that. So we towed a car. We had a truck bed full of all of our uh, little booth setup gear and uh, pretty much floored 65, 70 mile an hour the whole way uh, up canyons into headwinds, you name it. We never got over 370 with that system running. And, uh, and we used for a full trip, it was about 450 miles each way, 900 mile round trip, fully loaded, floored the whole way. Uh, we ended up using about three gallons of water the whole trip. So not a ton of use. You're not gonna, you know, unless you've got something running super hot cause you got things really whacked out on it. You're not going to use a ton of water. It's, it's minimal. It's easy. Uh, it controls well, it controls as well as we can. It's going to work off the critical temps. It's going to miss the water really great. It's easy to install. I really feel like we finally got this thing dialed in after three years of different designs and test meals on our bus uh, ourselves that this is the final product and we're excited to bring it to you. Uh, we will have it listed on our website, hopefully by the time you see this video. Uh, so check us out. Uh, we'll do pre-orders right now. We're, we're doing a small batch at first and if it really picks up, uh, get your pre-orders in because then we're going to start cranking these things out. But that's, uh, that's the jive right there. So stay tuned and we're just going to run a motor and we're going to show you this thing just spraying right into that fan show you how non-dramatic it is it's a pretty easy system to do so stick around and find out All right, so as you can see, not a lot of water gets used. This is not a big sloppy mass going on in your engine bay. This is a very controlled situation. Uh, like I say, three years of testing and development on this has got us to this point. Uh, I've done a lot of hard work, a lot of, uh, of long-term testing to make sure this works for you. Now, peak summertime, you guys can hop in your bus, go on that road trip, go camping, go take the family out to ice cream. And not worry about going, well, that's kind of hot and, you know, drive the car you enjoy. That is the whole point, right? And so this hopefully makes it easier. Uh, add some peace of mind for some of your road tripping. Uh, if you're going to haul a bunch of weight uh, and you want to just be extra safe, there you go. Uh, like I say uh, earlier in the video, I think I covered uh, this doesn't take the place of an oil cooler. Oil coolers cool the oil. They don't cool the heads. Now you've got a way to cool your heads as well. So. If you've got a real powerhouse in your bus and you put an external oil cooler on it that's thermostatically controlled, that's the way I like them run, so you don't overcool the oil. You got a good oil cooler system going, you throw this on it too, and you have a bus that you can depend on, you can drive it, you can enjoy it. So I hope this uh, answers any questions. Email us or uh, hit us up on Facebook if you have any questions about the system or anything like that. But uh, we've got her dialed in pretty good. And I hope you guys enjoy it. I, guys, I hope this helps you guys enjoy your cars a lot more, regardless of how hot it is outside or how far you think you got to drive, anything like that. Have a great day. And uh, I don't know what's next for us. I'm out of ideas. Just kidding. <laughs>